And we're live. We're up. <laughs> I think we're live now, yeah, yeah. A little bit live, yeah. <laughs> After oh, us, there we go. moving on, vaping things for just a sec, and that's what they're there for. Apologies, guys, I had forgotten to unmute uh, Aiden and Simon there. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, again, I... <laughs> so I'll tell you what, right, we'll start right at the beginning. Yo, 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 thank you for joining us. I'll tell you what, if. if... <laughs> I'm going to start using sign language. It's all right. Don't worry about I'll it. I'll show myself the door, well, shall I? I'll be right. Up. Obviously, so long. Did it for about 25 minutes. And we didn't realise Adam was not talking at all. <laughs> Just one of those things. You're all right. Don't worry. So, I'm not even going to say all that again. But well done to getting us on there, Dan. You're a star, brother. Yes, you get them you know. They don't quite work right. So, I'll tell you what we're going to do is we're going to go straight over to the one, the only, Mr. Captain Quayley. What have you got in your box? Good evening, everybody. Um, I, um, I've, I've got less than I had last week, but more than I had in the first week. So. <laughs> um, I, I, everything that I'm trying this week, I'm trying preparation for the uh, holidays. Um, so, starting off with the, um, I've forgotten the bloody name of it now, Freemax Mesh Pro. Um, oh, nice. Never go on holiday with a, with a rebuildable, always go the stock coil tank, and I love it, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, trying different juices at the moment, I'm on um, IVG uh, macarons with strawberries. Macarons. 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 We're getting, um, macarons are coconut, coconut biscuits. Aiden, can you yeah. turn your speakers down a little bit, mate? Are we the same thing then. as macarons? No, macarons are like little... Meringue type things, aren't they? Are you know about the millions? No, no, no. Macarons are like tiny little colourful meringues. All right. Mm. I had the millions before, but I've had plenty of theirs before. The millions is quite nice. Mm. Oh, that's what so you mean, the juice. No, no, this, they do I, IVG macarons, IVG. Oh, is it menthol and IVG something else as well? All right, guys, just stop a second. There we've got. Uh, has someone forgotten to mute their uh, vid uh, cast? Except whoever's watching the cast is uh, is coming back through. Well, it's not me because I've, I've not, not done me. it. So uh, it is not I. It is not okay. I. Chunky <clears throat> monkey. <laughs> Sorry, but that someone was feeding back. That someone was, was it you, Dan? It was you, Dan, wasn't it? No. <laughs> was it Mr. Quayley? No, not me. <laughs> yeah, the There's characters a weird say weird echo. echo. There's a weird echo in the room. What? I can't turn around any further down. I'm normally quite okay with what I've got. I don't, I don't think we've got anything different than normal. Yeah. Okay, that let's go. Again. <laughs> keep, keep going, Tom. Sorry about that. <laughs> Aiden sounds fine, Simon sounds fine, but Dan, you're a twat. <laughs> you can tell if it's me because my little green bit on the uh, screen will appear up. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what you've done, what you've got on yours is like you're sort of like coming in and coming out. We've had it for about a couple of weeks. I don't know what it is with it. Don't know what's going on. It's like yeah. now, you know, like now, you're like going. In. <laughs> anyway, you stay quiet and we'll just keep talking to Mr. Coyley. <laughs> So yeah, that was three match, three match mesh pro on the T class, and these these T classes at the minute. Um, I I I've done this one a few weeks, but it was from um, E Sig one, the, the ninety quid I think E Sig one at the minute, and it's a big okay. chunky thing, but by Christ, it's good. Um, I am also on, and I can't remember the name of this. I've got the Reload X on the top. 
and it's the times by, I don't want to call it banana split, but it is a banana split. The banana what? Banana, 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 banana something or other. But it's a, a mech. There's a song somewhere there, look. Yeah, it's banana, like banana, a, banana, banana, banana. <laughs> really, really nice switch. Um, it's elitist. Elitist. No, 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 no. No, it's cheap. Um, but it's, it's really good. And uh, in that, I have. So this I picked up from my local vape store. Um, this grape jelly. Ooh, grape um, jelly. And I've not. I've found one other place that stocks it online. Um, so I should be going back to my vape shop. The grape jelly is nice, but the blueberry jelly is phenomenal. Without swearing, it is absolute. And I'm going to need to go and find this in bulk and buy it. It is so so nice really nice um one of the biggest things just while we're just on it is i'd love to say hello uh, to um mbk obviously he's, he's not going to be casting anymore just while you're off in between it sorry to interrupt you and mm -hmm. wish you all the best you've ever all what you're doing mate i know you still put your reviews out understand family comes first and we're all going to miss you mate so i wish you all the best while you're on here Right then, back on to you, Mr. Coyley. I'm so sorry yes, about you. Yes, all the best from me, Danny, as well. Um, and finally, the only other thing, he takes the top on and takes the whole lot off. I'm on the Aspire Sprite pod system, and that is now my favourite pod system by Country Mile. Um, in that, I've got the uh, Dinner Lady Lemon Tart, the Nick Salts, uh, 20 milligram, which, again, nicest Nick Salts I've tried. <laughs> really smooth loads of flavor and this little aspire sprite is just it's only a 650 mile battery in it so it's a bit smaller than the um breeze 2 which is i think it's 950 um and i've only had it for a day or two but it's just it's really really good it's a little bit warmer warmer vape than the other pod systems that i've had um but really really liking that and that's it, that's me. So my, my holiday vapes are the Sprite, and I've got two of those to go on holiday so with me. So is it next week you are leaving us? I am. I, I leave you on so Thursday morning. How are we going to be able to cope without you? going to be without a limb. That's how bad it's going to feel. <laughs> I'll, I'll... So if you just check, make sure our sound's a little bit better, I think I've actually worked out what it was. Also, IBC, thank you very much for being my first Patreon. You're an absolute star. Thank you very much for doing that. So yeah, we're gonna miss you, bro. But it's yeah. only what is it? We only got a week away from you. Yes, yeah. I shall. I'll call in from Lanzarote. I'll uh, I'll ring, and you can you can all sit and watch the entertainment with me. Because about this time next week, I should be sat in the bar watching all the entertainment. So uh, you can. All well, the go. thing is, if you've got enough um, sort of like battery or anything like that, maybe you could uh, just phone in. Yeah. And go. Fa 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 I think it'd be a good giggle. Mm, no, will. Right then, Dan, it's been a bit stressful right at the beginning for you, brother, but you have pulled us through. Hey. You are our Apollo 11. Yeah, hey. they Were they the ones that didn't crash, weren't they? I can't remember. I don't know. There were a film about them, wasn't it? Well, we have crashed. out of space. It's fine. Still it doesn't here. matter how they still landed. still rocking on, bro. Well done. <laughs> what are you vaping on? And if you say one mod, I'm going to cry. Well, I don't know. I was just thinking I was going to just show my dreamer and... Uh... Recall Rebel, and that'd be it. In fact, I haven't even put a battery in it yet. Uh, so Charging battery. Got the Recall Rebel. Uh, so, yeah, got that one. Got uh, my recurve on top of the Pulse BF box. Um, then I've got my dead bunny on top of the beautiful uh, Votec by Vi uh, uh, well, it's the Via um, 240 by Votec, which is the sister company of um, UVC. If you know UVC, uh, I, I they used did to the art. Well, no, I actually used the BBC when I was school. <laughs> she had a right big floppy dish. <laughs> oh, sorry, disc. <laughs> um, what else have I got uh, on me today? Oh, I've. Uh, Got my TM24 Pro on top of the blank screened uh, Tesla 6 mudkin. Still running at 95 watts as far as I'm aware. <laughs> yeah, I just feel my way. 
<clears throat> yep. Dion, is my, is my volume better? So turn me, turn my levels down a bit. Dion was just saying. If you've turned your levels down a bit, I probably have to turn you up a little bit. Probably. No, I was. Cecil was saying I was too loud. Yeah, I turned you down a little bit, so that right. shouldn't have affected it that much. How could Mr. Coyle be too loud? <laughs> I'm a very quiet bloke. He's got. Mate, a very... I tell you what, you're like a 70s, 70s porn star to me, mate. Oh, His voice carries very well. <laughs> wow, chicka, wow, wow. That's that's my new uh, new career sorted then. <laughs> 70s porn star, a 70 year old porn star, one of the two. <coughs> Either way, there's going to be a bit of creaking. Um, come on, Dan, so what else have you got, brother? Um, now you put the battery in it. Okay, yeah, so got the, uh, I think that's uh, four, yeah, I've got four mods, so that's just the Votech with the Dead Bunny. Oh, dropping my recall, <laughs> Dreamer, uh, the BF, and yeah, that's it so far. <laughs> So Dan, have you got it coming on for review? Uh, I've not actually seen anything come out for a little while. No, on here, it's but... um, okay. I'm, I've got, I've got, un I've got unboxing to do. I've literally got shelving to put up, and that I've got to make my office look really nice. So it's, uh, I won't be able to top Vic set up probably, but I'm gonna do my best to make it look as good as it can. So you've got to fix your office up first before yeah. you start reviewing. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, because I've still got boxes behind me. So. You're not going to sort of like have a background where it moves and stuff? Or... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, um... You're a lot more posher than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can tell where you went, no, no, no. It's not no. like I eat jelly. <laughs> 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 so uh, when's the next review coming out for you? Okay, um, so I've got a big box of juices which I picked up at Expo. And that's telling you how far back my last lot of reviews were was literally a couple of weeks after Expo and I've I've moved house and I've been too busy unfortunately with family stuff to be able to do any reviews. But hopefully all being well, I um, should start up within the next week or two to be able to do so. No bath towel in the breeze then, Dan. What? It, it is a little bit hard trying to get the reviews out once you're moving house and stuff like that, I can't yeah. understand it. Uh, you also need to sort the mic out. That's what I think we're going to be sorting out this week because you, you keep fading in a, a little bit in and out. I don't know if you can. Sam, can you hear it or is it just me? Uh, it's, it, was, it was okay. It went in and in and out a bit. Uh, we can't combine this combination with with Sinner's last comment, which was Mr. Coyle, seventies porn star. <laughs> I need to fill your coil and wet your wick. <laughs> <coughs> the I thing about it. it as well, though, is Sinner could actually do that. <laughs> man who could make sure your wick is wet. <laughs> well, it must be down to me. I, I'm not yes, actually got loads on the actual horizon. I've, I've still got the same sort of stuff I've been vaping on. Um, again, for me, reviews coming out in the next couple of days. The solo's coming out tomorrow, which I'm quite enjoying that. I've got some of the um, ferocious flavours, Heisenberg, which is quite nice. I have now got the, um, which we spoke about last week. To get wrong charge, so fast to charge up, which is the Espion Silk with a notch gold tank. Loving this, but unfortunately, like a div, didn't read the actual instructions that come with the tank. And I'm thinking, I'll tell you, it must be all right, it should be about 50 watts, 60 watts, you'll be fine. No, 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 it is between 20 and 30 watts. So I'm going. <coughs> <laughs> and then I read the instructions. No, sorry, people. Anybody who's got a notch, not notch, <laughs> a notch core tank from uh, uh, the wonderful people at Joytech, should stay between 25 and 30 watts. Should be fine. But yeah, I'm really loving this. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic battery lasts for days. I am still on the wonderful um, Puma with. I've got the Frogman tank from Vat2 on there. I love that tank. It's a lot better than the throne tank you can actually get, so I'm really enjoying that. Um, in that, I have got a little bit of electric sucker punch, which is quite nice. What's, what's the flavour profile? That one's a, a little bit of lemon and candy with it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, like a lemon candy. It reminds me a little bit more of a, you know, them lemon sherbets you used to get. Oh, yeah. All yeah. top of your mouth, go rigid. Yeah. Yeah. You mean a lemon sherbet? A bit of lemon sherbet. Lemon sherbet. Make sure you yeah, that's, that's the weirdest analogy I've ever heard. Makes the top of your mouth go rigid. It was analogy yeah, the right way. Yeah. <laughs> it's not all things that go rigid, but at me, it's top of your mouth. Because his name's Peter. Um, and then I've got the Vim. The Vim. 
Yeah. Uh, cracking little devices. It's a banger. He wants to go in your pocket. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, I've got that on the Marta Lung Coil. Um, and I've got some of the Snow Queen, which is um, from Druid's Brew, which is yeah. really, really nice. Um, naturally extracted tobaccos, and it is a, a menthol. And it's really nice in this. Not a lot of people do that and then wait for you to do it. <laughs> Get a clue. Then we've got a bit of uh, Fantasy Ice. We've got that on the um, wall crawler. Uh, with. Uh, which tank is that? Do, 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 do. It's the Pro X. It's Pro X Core, I think. Again from Joy Tech. <sighs> really nice, nice flavour on that. And to be honest with you, oh no, one, one more. I've got the J Bone, the Wizbeck J Bone. It's the looks, nice. looks Tokic. It does look nice. <coughs> is that how you say it? Looks Tokic. Looks Tokic. Looks Tokic. That's the one. I <coughs> pronounce it better than me. And on that, I have got a little bit of Lucky Eight um, Fruit Burst from the Irish Brew Company. They were a fantastic company. I really do like them. So for me, that is roughly around about it. So we're doing pretty well. We're doing well. We have got round to 22 minutes past 10. So I've, I've still been put to shame again with, with the fewest number of uh, things <laughs> that I'm vaping. <clears throat> I need to make more of an effort. Well, no, you see, the thing is, if you've got what you've got and what you're actually vaping on, I don't say brewing on that, but what if you're vaping on is what you need to do. Um, right then. I'll tell you what, normally we go straight to the news, but I think tonight we'll go straight down to Dan, the man, who is the tech man of the Late Late Vape Show. Have you found anything this week? Oh, uh, no. Okay, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, I'll spend pretty much most of my lunch times and a little bit of in between when I can just research and browse and websites and everything. Literally, uh, the only thing coming out at the moment is the uh, coil-free tanks, which is the newest technology out there. And lots of things are just going over um, previous tech, which seems to be making a reappearance in that. So you've got your ceramic, pl uh, ceramic plate coils dipping back in again, your mesh coils back in. Again, the same as what we said last week, that it seems the old tech seems to be re uh Innovated and repurposed, and they seem to be reusing old stuff. Um, obviously, obviously, for maybe next week, so we can maybe look at new mods that are coming out and stuff like that. Is is yeah. there any new mods that any three of us have actually seen that have come out? I've not seen any new mods this week. No, I've been absolutely seen nothing, nothing at all. Joytech's come out with a new uh, AIO, which is a uh, the little big brother of the. Um, E I always sound like a farmer. Eco A I O, Eco, <laughs> hmm. Ego E A I O, Eco. Uh, so they've come out with a bigger one of that one. That's coming out. I'm getting that next week. Uh, looking really nice. A little bit funky. Nice bit of splattering on it. Um, I understand there's a few other bits of tank stuff come out. Obviously the um, new lot where well, you've got the Free Max has come out. Yeah. That a lot of reviewers have got that. Apparently, I've got that coming next week, whether it comes or not. Um, it looks a little bit garish, don't it, with a great big rounded tank and. It's a funny. So, I mean, it, I I put it. I got it because I wanted to take it on holiday, and the first thing that I found is I have some little mods that I take on holiday, and I put it on top of the little mod, and it looks just absolutely going to on top of it because it's it's like resin. The airflow ring at the bottom is really really big and yeah. really wide. Which is why it's on the T class at the minute. I should probably end up taking the T class on holiday with me. Um, but it's, it's, I don't know, the, the black one is, I mean, it's like a black and grey and gold sort of resin effect. But I think I've got the, you know, I get the purple one and the, the red one that's supposed to be red actually looks pink, which that, that wasn't. Yeah, I didn't have that. Yeah. So I had to watch last week because obviously I've not been given it yet for uh, review, so them to add it. And I think I watched for five minutes and just sat there blowing clouds. It was so yeah. interesting. It's it's really I mean the flavour out of it. I've got this and I've got the Falcon and this just for me just blows the Falcon out of the water it really does. So what the coil less and I I don't know but I've got the dual because you can get a single dual and a triple coil and I've got the dual coil in this at the minute and the yeah. flavour is just outstanding. Really really is good. The only the only little negative and I'm not a reviewer but the only little negative I've got is the top fill. See that on there? Yeah yeah. It's it's a real 
it doesn't give you a lot Kidding of space. Well. Short kidding well. It, well, yeah, it is, but I'm trying to show you what I mean. So, width, got so if you've got a width of a bottle, it might be too big to get down, straight down, so, I yeah, guess. Yeah, so when you've got the big 100ml bottle, it's, <laughs> yeah. you see what I mean? You can't... You and also you're going to get that right airlock, aren't you? No, you don't, you, I've not got an airlock yet, <clears throat> although I've had it sort of just push out at the top of the bottle and dribble down the side of the tank. That was an just, airlock? No, well, yeah, I don't know what it was, or it was just me just squeezing too hard, but it just it just doesn't... I don't know, you can't get a straight straight run into the top of it. But apart from that, I have no problems with it at all. I said that's that's going on uh, on holiday. Well, on the days. Yeah, when I'm on holiday, I have, a, I have a little one near the pool, so I don't want to piss people off um, while I'm near the pool, blowing clouds all over the place. So I have the little, yeah. little pod in by the pool, and then night time I'm out with a big mod and, and sub out tank when I'm out of the way everybody. So, Before we get on to anything else, Mr. Coyle, would you like to uh, tell everybody what efforts you have put in this week to make sure that we have got a wonderful, kicking, amazing Facebook page? Can you just tell them all the effort that you've put in there? Because so, me and Dan have done a little bit of trying to help, but I tell you what, it's all been Mr. Coyle who has put loads of effort in to making yeah. sure that we've got a wonderful Facebook page. Top hat off to you, brother. Thank you so much for doing all of it. Thank you. I'd, I'd, I'd put together the group um, and it, it was fairly quick and I've tried to put a few bits and pieces on there, I would have liked to have got a bit more time but the group is facebook.com, if somebody can put a link in chat, I'll, I'll put a link in, in a minute, but facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the late late vote show. Um, there's rules in there, just normal bog standard rules um, <clears throat> and then... She's what? she's absolutely amazing. Thank Carica, you. on the ball, yeah. yeah the ball. fantastic. Um, and what I'll do is every week uh, I, I put a, a thing in there to say, you know, what what would you like us to do, everything else. But then I also put a post in there saying, if you've got any questions for the casters, please put those in there. If you've got anything Ooh. you want to discuss about, the, or you want to discuss on the show, put that in there. But there was the sum total of zero this week, so... Uh, uh, but it, we're, all, we're all just sort of like kicking off, we're all just sorting it out. And another one that I'd like to put there forward is the amount of support you have had. This yeah. week, I know you, you were saying that you'd had a bit of a crappy week last week um, about the haters and little bits that you've had on your, your with the coily. Oh, yeah. But I'd, I'd, I read about at least 20 comments this week of how much people are backing you all the way on it. And it was so nice to watch it because you're a lovely bloke and everybody loves you in the actual vape world, the, the think the world here. And... Um, it was so nice the support that you've had this week. Yeah, do you know? I I honestly can't say enough, and and I always I sort of feel guilty when I say it. I feel guilty saying, you know, thank you to everybody for all the support and and because I just feel like I'm just saying it for the sake of it. I'm not. Just I get so much support, so much good feedback. They're a really great community in the group, the UK review community, the international review community. Um, the vendors that we do have on board, I know there's a whole who are about vendors who, who don't you know, really show an interest and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it's honestly it just just means so 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 much. And if I could get round every person and say thank you, I would. But it's the support is just immense. It really is. I've, I've had a, another bit of really good news today as well. I can't Ooh. say anything yet, but that's, that's something that's, that's something else that's coming up. Gonna leave us so, uh, hanging then. <laughs> eh? Gonna leave us hanging for now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's just it, the support. I honestly I can't I can't say enough. And such nice people. Everybody says. There's drama in the in the vape industry, and there is drama. But I think a lot of the drama is bred or born by certain people in the vape industry. And I think well, know, it's only when you think to go. That's the way it goes. So well, yeah. So I'm, I'm sat down there, and uh, yeah. I got a <laughs> message that I was uh, going to get something really nice in the post. Yeah, mine as well. To get you, right, so we've saved ours. Obviously, my wife opened it up thinking it was sweets. Um, <laughs> I should have the sweets out of it. <laughs> So, um, we got our little bit of a gift, didn't we? So, yeah. are we going to open it all together, ladies? May as well, yeah. <laughs> right, oh. Down your two slides. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, sellotape. Oh, so, sellotape. <laughs> bit of sellotape off your... Yeah. Good sellotape. evening, Mr. Mark at Nature Vape. How are you? Oh, I've got no nails, so trying to take sellotape off. It's <laughs> <laughs> It's catching, it's called Sellotape. <laughs> Sellotape? Well, hey, the first thing, ladies and gentlemen, which you always get, which I really am so happy, you can't have a 
Me watch. <laughs> How do you go? Do my Yeah. Oh, I've got a pink one. Right. I, I want to just be in touch with your feminine side. I love this. Ladies and gentlemen, I have got my own personalised Mr. Coily. Look at that. Can we oh, see it? Oh, wow. That is amazing. We little bro. So that goes. And I've got the red. Which I, I think I think what we did. Have you oh. got yours as well? Fox out. That's amazing. Yeah. We are so lucky. Thank you so much. <coughs> You're more than welcome. Do? Thank what? you. Yeah. Oh, shitting thing. So what do we have to do? What did uh, Kerrika say to us? You have to put your coilies in the air and we'll wave them around like you just don't care. <laughs> say whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. Thank you very much, Simon. That is. Thank you, really mate. I'm so that. chuffed with that. Yeah, that and is And I did promise, Saints, if I can just go with me one second. I did promise Saints something. So I'll, I'll just let him see that now. I don't know how well he'll be able to see that. Cool. That's these two aren't far off finished but I'll, once they're finished I'll, uh, I'll pull them off the printer and, uh, and show you. That is so um, cool to see though is, is how they actually are made. Yeah. Put uh, your coalies in the air like you just don't care <coughs> say woo! <laughs> so <laughs> saying, as, soon as, as soon as they're finished I'll pull it off the printer and I'll, uh, I'll let you have a look. We are so lucky to have that mate. Thank you so much mate. Yeah, well, I, I actually feel like I'm a part of the club now. Yeah. With a proper little bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. <coughs> Thank you very much, Sam. So really appreciate it. We are that. gonna um, sort of like move away from little bits and bobs. Obviously, Dan's done his best on the tech this <laughs> week again. <laughs> um, as soon as there's some decent vape tech and I can actually find some decent news where I get my hands on it, then yes, we will be all go. But until then, I've actually got three. To be honest with you, I've got three. Well, well the, the the thing is, uh, we'll sort out. We'll sort out our tech side. We'll work together. I I could say there are things out. But um, there's a certain phrase you can't really say on the without just making funny sounds. There's loads of there's tanks. There's loads of new Sibida tanks coming out. That's it. That's all I've seen so far. I could have done a bit of the old uh, Muppets Sibida. <laughs> so, Mr. Coyley, you have got all the hopes and the feeling all the way till twelve o'clock. Get us through the shit, brother. What is the first? <laughs> What is the first bit of news we've got? So I've tried to, uh, I've tried to put these in the order that I, I, I that I reacted to them when I read them, um, and I, I've not read through them fully, so I'll, I'm sort of keen to get everybody else. We can else's, read through them uh, together. It's fine. Feedback. So I've just read in chat as well. Coily necklaces. That's that's a thing. That's something we should do. Um, right. Oh, right. So the first one is uh, Naked One Hundred <laughs> e-liquid donates fifty thousand dollars to Casa. C A S A A, um, and it's basically saying the e-liquid brand vapors will typically see in every vape shop, head shop, and even some convenience My stores. God. Naked 100 has done something entirely unprecedented in reference to the vape industry's participation in supporting vape ad advocacy. Um, <sighs> for the most part, we often hear donations to fundraising events, but we would rather learn of an e-liquid manufacturer spending fifty thousand pounds on a single donation to a consumer advocacy group. Donation that was literally out of nowhere, no warning, no preparation, just a nice funded surprise. Um, so th I, it, it was quite. It, I, I sort of struggle with this one a bit. I love that. I, I, I sorry, <laughs> you're putting me right off now. <laughs> that's got to be screenshot. There's going to have to be a meme for that somewhere. <laughs> 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 So, um, Naked 100, which I've done a couple of reviews for, have got really nice use as well. So they've given £50,000 to whom? Uh, to Casa, which is, um, I don't know, I can't remember. I did read it earlier on. Um, I thought she'd a load of soul in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, no Casa? It's the Consumer Advocates for Smoke Free Alternatives Association. So now you can see why I couldn't remember it off the top of my head. Yeah, that's um, brilliant. So they it's, are it, a it, wonderfully it, nice company. It, it is, and I'm a, I'm a bit sort of conflicted about it though, because is that not sort of like if you took um, Philip Morris supporting uh, a smoking um, advocacy group? It, it sort of, I, I think it's a really good thing, but then it, how is it perceived by other people? They'll just say, oh, it's a vape company sponsoring a, a vape ad advocacy campaign. I think that's the thing for me is is it's just 
You think though, is who else is going to really support them? True. That's it. I'm I'm just sort of a bit um, in in two minds, and that was the reason why I picked it out as, as sort of two things. I thought that's a really great thing, and then I just sort of sat back and I thought I'm not quite sure how everybody else would take this. The, the non vapors how will they take it? And just they'll just see it as a. I I, I see this quite often, and and if also if you look. Um, anybody who's been on Facebook just so lately, there's been a lot been done for the little uh, child who passed away, which is great. All the yeah. companies have sort of like gone together and worked it out and, and made sure that the dad can stay off work for a little while. <clears throat> but there were certain groups and certain other people who were a little bit funny about this. And what they've certainly said was that the only reason why these groups have got involved is to actually publicise their own company. What do you think about that? Mm. This. It's just money, isn't it? It's the way that um, America and big American companies always have been. It's just. But, but, but that's that. I mean, that's a really good point. Is it? Is it to help the advocacy thing, or is it a marketing ploy by Naked One Hundred? And, and you know, you could be real negative and say it's it's a marketing ploy. And that's yeah. probably that's probably doing them out of, of what they're seeing is a good thing. It's um, unfortunately, the only thing you can look at is that the past endeavours of the company beforehand. Um, if they're if they're not have been very supportive previously, and all of a sudden they're doing something which looks like it's good off their back, they could be doing it. It could be seen as one or two things. Oh, they've made a change, or two, they're just trying to cover them, cover their own backs. I suppose so. But then, what about new companies that want to donate to advocacy? Should they should they not donate? No, I, I, th I think they should. That's the thing. I think. I think they should be all in with that. If and at the end of the day, the end goal is the important thing. Although sometimes you are going to be looking, thinking, what's their, uh, what's their oh, ulterior, mo ulterior motive? Yeah, do you see that? Obviously, a lot in this world nowadays, people are not actually looking at somebody's going to be really good. You're not just like sticking a couple of pennies into a box for children in need. It's a lot of companies going, we have done this, but we've got one of these ginormous checks and we've done this and we want our name on television. Is hmm. it the same thing in, in advocacy uh, to do with vaping? And also when something comes up, such as that poor little lad who passed away, which uh, I wish the best of the family, are there big companies putting their names on it? Hmm. Are they giving away things to have publicity or is it something to do with charity? Hmm. I mean, Red, Red Fox is in chat. Obviously, she's based in the States. Perhaps we perceive things differently or perhaps I perceive things differently to, to what they do in America I've, been, I've, I've just sort of gone back through the chat just to look at some Red Fox's comments and obviously it's, it's very much back in it and, and it's like I said I see it as a good thing but my only conflict is how other people would, would see it I'm all behind vape and support and advocacy so mm. what's that what said Dave <coughs> Sorry, it's, it's a big t-shirt it's like my bed I don't know if anybody has like, like bed t-shirts or no. like I have like big, humongous, fatty vents. So you know you can move around in them. Yeah, like really, really nice. I have yeah. big pants like that as well. But <laughs> mother in laws, mother in laws knickers. Uh, um, we, we, so we anyway, don't, we don't want to see those though, eh? <laughs> Sorry, neither do I. <laughs> Spell them on my one. Um, the thing is, is, it's not just in America. A lot is it to do with the UK as well. And the one that I've been on about was to do with the UK. Um, and there's been lots and lots of trouble over Facebook over the last three four days about it which you might not have picked up on or anything like that but there's been certain groups saying that certain people are um, only doing it only putting the money towards it or trying to raise money to make their company look a little bit better yeah and I've, I've, I've seen that and I think that was that was um, a low blow for that company that was doing the the sponsorship for me that was a really low blow whoever I, I didn't see who it was who, who was slating them I think that's just you know, that, that for me is just is just so wrong to to to. I, I thought it was to point the finger at somebody who's trying to to help somebody else, and say you know, and especially in the context that it was being done, I just think that was. That was can I just uh, can say? I, can I ask another question on it? Sorry to interrupt you, Dan. Go on, mate. Um, all I was going to say is, okay. Uh, one thing I've noticed that's just come up on the group. If you if you if you don't invite everyone and everyone to the group, or the, we like having people invite to the group, but us as reviewers know that we get ourselves tagged in so many groups that we didn't even want to be 
part of. If you want to tell us about group, tell us about group, but don't invite everyone and everyone that you know that's in the vape industry because you're just going to annoy people. So uh, I've just seen that we've got over about te uh, ten people being invited by one person, so they they could get ignored with that. So we want people in the group. Don't get me wrong. Just don't do, don't go <laughs> invite loads of people and annoy them, please. Yeah, <laughs> it all depends. Obviously, us as reviewers, it's a little bit different because we're constantly done by humongous amounts of people to put in there, and that's obviously because you sit there and I've got three and a half thousand people on on Facebook, so they all yeah. want me for the for what I've got on Facebook. It's not so much that they actually want me because I'm a reviewer. And you get it daily. That's what yeah. you get is daily. But obviously if people are trying to add us as a brand new Facebook group and a brand new page of that we are on this network, then please tag them away. But, mm. but obviously don't be over the top. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like a, it, it's, it's, it's an absolute nightmare, isn't it, Dan? It, it, yeah. I, I actually looked through all my Facebook groups. Now, I've not just got vape groups, but I've got hundreds of vape groups on my on my list in Facebook at the moment. Mm. But I, I, I actually shot myself the other day, so I was, I was selling something on uh, some of the local for sale groups, and I thought, you know, it gives you the option to choose which, which group you want to put this thing for sale in. And there was just hundreds of them. I thought, I never realised I was in so many Facebook groups. Just happened. Uh, Stuart Lake, congratulations on being a granddad, mate. Yeah, um, congratulations. Con I'll tell you what, you've got lots of looking after to do. <laughs> At least you can give them back. That's a good thing. Mm. Um, just going back to what Vapor Bunny said, yeah. she said, what, what does it matter as long as the money's getting to well, where it's supposed to go? And I absolutely agree. And I think, I said, I think my, my, my conflict is just how it's perceived by other people. Um, and I think if they understood it like we understand it, then for me, it's, 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 it, it isn't an issue anyway. It's just no. this conflict of how other people perceive it. We all perceive, if we see Philip Morris giving money to, and, and this will bring me on to the next news story, giving money to something we say that's wrong they shouldn't be doing that and I, I would hate to see people saying the same thing about you know the vape industry just two things to clear up there um, obviously bro you know how much I think of you you're an absolute corking uh, reviewer uh, TBD but we don't have anybody um, apart from me and Dan maybe putting our reviews up on our our, our Facebook page you, you're very much welcome to post stuff that's maybe the news or stuff that you might think would be great to go on the page but other people's reviews are not trying to get them swamped with it it's just a page for this this obviously Show. our wonderful YouTube channel um, and we're just trying to keep it towards that aren't we Dan and, and Simon yeah yeah absolutely uh, so if you want to see things on the show yeah, brought yeah. up about this if Somebody's asking for five thousand pound on a just giving page. You just say they get ten. Should they not get ten? Should they get five and then the other five go to somewhere else? Or do they think they should actually get all the money that's been raised for them? Um, I, I think if it's raised specifically for that cause, it should be going to that cause. If it's then, if they then make a decision saying actually, we've got f quite a bit here. We'd like to give it to this charity or something. It's down to them at the end of the day. Um, I don't think anyone should be penalised for that. If it's someone's raised a specific cause and they've overshot that by a couple of hundreds or even maybe a thousand, if that gives them a better sense of lifestyle or it goes to the charity and the charity are able to do more with that. Uh, that's it. It's the context, isn't it? Can yeah. that money be spent? You know, if you're if you're looking for fifty thousand pounds for something, and that that something is only going to cost. Fifty thousand pounds, and you raise seventy thousand pounds. For me, then you know you should probably look to to pass that seventy thousand pounds on to to something else, a similar charity or whatever. Mm. You know, if that extra twenty thousand pounds is going to bring more benefit, is going to give a lot more help in the in what you're actually raising it for. Then for me, yeah, just just you know, stick to what you originally raised. To me personally, Simon, I think you hit the nail on the head there, and I don't think anybody could have explained it any better than the way you just did that. But my biggest thing is if it were just a charity for, say, somebody needs a scooter or somebody needs this amount of equipment to make their life a little bit better and they raise that amount but they go over it, then maybe you could uh, put that towards somebody else's equipment that actually needs it. But if somebody in a family where they've had a massive tragedy or something like that, maybe if they've gone over by £5,000 and that, that family's going to... Uh, be looked after a little bit better and they're going to live a yeah. little bit more comfortable then I think that should just stay at the same course yeah. that the people have given that money towards 
Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Anything okay. else, Dan? Oh, uh, so, uh, well, I've got another, another news story. Yeah. Which... No, I'll, I'll just finish it off. That uh, oh, we're losing some frames. We're losing some massive frames there. I do apologise. Uh, I think we're back. We're back, yep. Yeah. We're back again? Okay, yeah. yeah, we're back, yep. Yeah. Um, so are we using XSplit or are we actually using OBS? I think I'm going to switch to OBS next week because XSplit's causing some major issues. Yeah, the thing about, the thing about OBS is you can actually do a test. Yeah. It sets it up as a wizard and it just shows you that way. I had the same problem with it. Sorry about that, Simon. Right. On your way, brother. So, new story two, which was sort of links a bit slightly to the first story. Uh, PMI's proposal to the NHS is entirely inappropriate um, and I found this quite sort of shocking actually. The largest and arguably most manipulative of the big to tobacco firms has been up to its old tricks again. Philip Morris International has run a series of publicity stunts in recent times to try and pull the wool over the eyes of those who have seen the company knowingly provide death causing products to the matters. The latest embarrassing attempt appearing to be socially responsible involves NHS and particularly disgraceful according to the leading public health experts. Uh, an apparent in an apparent bid to help the NHS staff quit smoking, tobacco giant proposed the following. To support the seventieth birthday sorry, the seventieth anniversary of the NHS, we are keen to work with you to help the seventy three thousand NHS employees, which was a shocker in itself for me, who currently smoke, to quit cigarettes. This will be a collaborative campaign you would provide cessation advice for quitting nicotine altogether and for smokers who do not quit we can help them switch to smoke free alternatives uh, as PM, PM, PMI representatives undoubtedly know this is a blatantly against the World Health Organization's framework set guidance states parties should not accept support or endorse partnerships and non-binding or non-enforceable agreements as well as any voluntary arrangement with the tobacco industry or any entity or person working to further its interests so, so, so Simon, just put that into people that they're going to understand it. Put it, into, <laughs> put it into layman terms, please. So basically, Philip Morris have gone to the NHS and say, we will help 73,000 people that you, or 73,000 smokers that you have in the NHS to quit smoking by offering them, assuming our products, their products, to help yeah, them quit course. smoking. Uh, you would assume so, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, well, he's, he's a brainy little bloke, isn't he? <laughs> so he's, he's not quite jumped on the uh, bandwagon of vaping, so he's, what he's going to do now is he's going to say, don't worry about your patches, don't worry about your chewing gum, don't worry about having these six, what we'll do is we'll give you free devices. Yep. Yeah, and it, it, it sort of smacks, doesn't it, of, of Philip Morris are just really, really sort of s scraping the barrel in a sense to, to try and make money, to try and get something back out of the tobacco industry, and, and, and for me, sort of jumping on the AHS it's just it is is so so wrong. Well, the thing the thing is, they've recently just been in the news for the whole issue of um, them advertising, getting told uh, off for trying to advertise for their healthier option of the uh, iCast and that, and they've been actually using advertising, which is actually against, uh, from memory, the uh, t is it the TPDR? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's actually against the regulations to be able to advertise at yeah. current, and that. Oh, is that your uh, printing finishing? That's my, uh, that's my that's printer that's finishing. Yeah. finishing off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, um, do you think we are going to have to stick together again as vapors and come together as a massive team and get this pillock pushed out? Mm. Yeah, uh, see, so the, the only thing we can do is be be the community that we are, which is generally most of the time uh, nice and nice people and uh, just try and support smoke, uh, support the smokers into vaping and explain to them the differences between a heat not burn and a vape and that, the difference between the chemicals and that, that's only like you've got VG, PG and flavourings okay uh, and nicotine uh, if you choose to have it in there uh, or you've got um the thousand chemicals which are now being heated instead of burned which as Chris showed in this video on Sunday uh, Mr Empire Vape Co he showed uh, the result of uh, what you're getting out of it is literally if you churn out the stuff after you've heated it it's ash hmm. 
sorry, Sam, go on. I was just saying, I just, I just think the, I was just reading through some of the comments there, um, and I think Grimmy said, uh, you know, FFS, the, the nicotine isn't the problem, um, and and I, I sort of agree with that because nicotine is the thing that's that's pushed out to be the the harmful thing, isn't it? In all these, in all the products, whether it be vaping, whether it be IPOS, whether it be cigarettes, it's always nicotine is the bad thing, nicotine is the bad thing, and yeah, it is addictive. That's that's the bad part of it. But in terms of harm. Nicotine is the is is probably, and I'm not going to state something that I don't know for definite scientifically because I don't know. But in my opinion, nicotine isn't the thing that does the damage, is it? No, okay, that's it that's the people. thing which America keeps driving is, oh, nicotine causes cancer. Nicotine causes cancer. Is as far as we're aware from what the studies have shown, nicotine isn't the cause of the cancer. It's the uh, it's the harmful chemicals you got the tar and everything else that's related to smoking, which just oh, what causes cancer. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. so it's what America's basically doing, and obviously, then our MPs get confused and that. Okay, so the campaign for tobacco-free kids in the U.S. class patch uh, nicotine patches as a tobacco product. Yeah, it's silly. <laughs> so, um, you know, if um, eventually somebody made nicotine. A part of like an eggplant because obviously you can merge plants together, can't you? Yeah. So obviously you've got your tobacco plant and you've got eggplants and stuff like that. Could they go down that sort of line of things, or? Well, the thing is, the the amount of nicotine you get from the uh, from the tobacco plant is where you get the majority of. I think you get a higher quantity out of it than you do out of your potatoes. Thing is, there's nicotine in all your food, so saying that uh, nicotine causes cancer is really stupid argument because pretty much 90% of your vegetables contain a form and level of nicotine in it. Mm. Yeah, it make a difference. Bacon, bacon gives you cancer as well, doesn't it? Apparently. Oh, well, everything gives you cancer, doesn't it? You sat down there, it were it were thingy toast, burnt toast, eggs, mm. white bread, and then it all comes back next year, and then it's not. It's it's fine. You, you can you can have it and you can't have it. And I'll tell you what, what what cheeses me off. Obviously, somebody in both your families must have been touched with uh, cancer somewhere along the lines, uh, mm-hmm. if not yourself. Um, and and I've, I've had it with my wife, and you don't know what, what's bad and what's not good to, to be able to have. Now, years and years ago, obviously, we knew what foods were coming because it came off the farmer's field and your mum cooked what you were eating. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Anyway, there's all these ready meals and all the crap they had. Is this a part, do you think? The stuff that you don't know what you're eating, that you don't know what you're getting. Is this the part of life that... See, when I was at school as well, there was no nut allergies. People didn't have nut allergies. People didn't have these sort of... Is it new or is it something that I've missed? See, I've, I've raised this before and people always say to me, yeah, but it's it's the fact that we've got the science now to be able to detect these things, to be able to know you know, what's causing them. We didn't have the science in the olden days. <coughs> you know, I, never sat in, I never sat in my school class and somebody had a bag of KP nuts and all of a sudden swelled up into a great big balloon and looked like he'd come off Harry Potter. Mm, it no, never no. happened in our life. That it never happened ever in my school. Oh. And we were eating nuts for fun. You were flicking up and see how many you could catch in your mouth. Obviously, I caught a lot. <laughs> but the thing is, is that, that that wasn't happening. Somebody wants swelling up, the tongue won't get in ginormous and dying. Yeah, well, that's what they raised. They raised in a, an a, an article in the news last year saying that how our bodies become immune uh, to uh, immune to things like antibiotics, and, that, and how our immunity immune systems are actually getting weaker. Because we can't, we can't, our bodies can't fight off certain things. Well, that, that. That, that isn't something that's old. That's something. That, that, sorry, that's not something that's new. That's old. Yeah. We all knew that at the beginning. It's something. That, the reason why I don't take antibiotics unless I'm on my death's door. If you ask my wife. My wife's had loads of antibiotics and my kids and stuff like that. There's eventually it's going to turn that key and stop it from happening. But eventually that key is not going to work in that locker. That's it. Sorry, yeah. Chunk, I didn't see Chunk in chat and uh, Mike MFA as well. I see. Um, also, I see MFA, congratulations on yes. your thousand subs, well brother. Um, but the, the, other, the other sort of thing that I was going to say then when you were talking about antibiotics and things like that, when we were kids, uh, if we, my auntie lived around the corner from us, and if her kids got chicken pox or whatever, she used to send us around to their house to actually get, you know, to, get you know get, and so you were immune to it for further on. And then somebody else mentioned, I can't remember who it was, playing in the mud. We used to play in mud, we used to make mud pies, we were doing all yeah. sorts of 
Well, the kids it. are so clean now that everything has to be cleanliness. Everything's hygiene. You've got hygiene hand gel, hand hygiene wipes. You've got bleachy work tops. Yeah. Your body just doesn't get the opportunity to get exposed to anything that's bad to be able to come immune to. I, I also go around. You know, when you walked around, I'd eat apples off the trees. I'd eat gooseberries. I'd, I'd go. Obviously, it's all to do with eating. Um, I'd go around Mrs. Whatever her name, and I'd go to her outside tap and sit my mouth underneath yeah. it and drink whatever yeah. I wanted to drink. I've even gone down to rivers and stuff like that and, and drank them. I was never ill. Um, the, the only stuff that I have ill is different to anything. You know, I'm, not, I'm not ill. I, I, very rarely I, I'm alone. I'm, I don't get colds. I don't get stuff. And I'll tell you what, since I've stopped va- uh, smoking, I don't really get colds and coughs either. I don't know if you no, found that yourself. Yeah, I found as soon as I've stopped, it's the only thing I get is the yearly flu. And that's really it. I didn't that. I don't get it, and I'm so glad that annoying cough's gone. Mm. <coughs> yeah. Middle at night, you're like, whoa, what's up with you? Yeah. Getting yeah. all that black phlegm in your mouth, thinking I've got to go. Rrr, 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 rrr. I had you know, that for about three feels, months. Yeah, three months, and then uh, uh, then the cough just went away. So the cough and the phlegm, phlegm up was for three months, and about six months I wasn't coughing at all, so. The worst, worst thing I used to have in the morning was getting up and I used to have a really dry throat and I used to have a real bad cough in the morning when I was smoking. And I've had none of that. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah absolutely. It's all gone. So, so for me, I think kids nowadays should be allowed to play more. My uh, wife used to be a teaching assistant um, at, the, at the, not, not the last school, she was at one previous to that. And the kids weren't allowed to eat anything. They weren't allowed to eat um, chocolate. They weren't allowed to have cakes. They weren't allowed to play on climbing frames. They weren't allowed to do anything that was slightly risky. Oh, that's your um, wife. No, my wife was a teaching assistant at the school where the kids weren't allowed to do this. Well, no, it's just, it's, it's all this, you know, what was the other thing that they say as well about competitiveness? They, they didn't want to have winners and losers anymore. Everybody had to be... Oh, we've got at school now, you don't have a proper sports day. No. You don't Everyone have, see, wins. I always think that in life, if you're going to try and teach somebody, all right, you might not be a winner in certain things at all in your life, but eventually you are going to learn something that you're going to be a winner in. But you've also got to learn how to lose. So if you're going yeah. to group everybody together and go, well, your team didn't win because you were all together, you should be able to have somebody who says, I'm the winner. I am the winner. That yeah. is the world. That's you life. It's reality, isn't it? Yeah. So once you, once you leave school, the reality is that you are fighting all the time, whether it be for your job, whether it be for the position in the queue in the supermarket or whatever. It's Everything is, is about, you know, sort of getting yeah. to the front. It's, uh, well, the, bit yeah, should, I, the, the bit they should be teaching him that, though, is not to be an over-glorious winner and also how to treat the people who are not the winners. Mm. Being able to put your hand around them. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Next time you'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Being a good sportsman. So I think I think in favour of all these all these uh, you know th- these these things that we're, we're suffering from nowadays, we should go back to basics a bit more. That's that's my uh, view on life. Let's go back. Get out and feel the mess around the mud. <laughs> yeah, go out, play, make make mud pies, and you know do the things that that we should do as kids. And I think I, I, don't, I don't think the, I don't think the, the country is as safe as it is. It was. We could we could sit down there and I walk for miles with my mates as a group. You know, like a bit like stand by me. You go and look for that dead person on the yeah. <laughs> on the railway tracks. Mm. But you were together. Your mum and dad knew you were safe. Yeah. You used to eat in certain places where we knew you were fine. If you went to Mrs. Rollinson down the road, she'd go and give you um, a burger or you'd have some chips. Mm. You'd be all right. And but you knew when as soon as it started getting dark, you've got to move your way back home. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we used to go playing out. What was, I need to think of something that somebody said. Uh, can you? What was it? Can you remember the last time that you played Cowboys and Indians, or the last time you played out? That was it. Can you remember the very last time you actually played outside as a kid? And British, I, I can't. I British can't bulldog in the, the summer. British bulldog in outside. the summer. Chucking that ball at the curb and uh, getting yeah. the to catch yeah, it. Yeah, very curvy. I tell you what, Simon, we'll sort a day out, mate, and I'll hold your hand and we'll go out and play together, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I can yeah. say what, we're going to shit some right kids. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> we we'll get push bikes and put lolly sticks in the spokes. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Really? Well, cards, it used to be playing cards. Uh, uh, have you actually met Simon? Uh, huh, sorry? Have you met Simon in actually full glory? No, really? not yet, no. Right, obviously, I, I'm not a small kid, I'm six foot tall, right? And I, I'm yeah. pretty, now, Simon dwarfs me. 
He is huge. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, me and him going around skipping <laughs> their local local area. <laughs> right, we're playing KB. He's, he's fucking winning. He's huge. Yeah. <laughs> Who's got the sweets? It doesn't matter. He can have them. He can have them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah, that. We, we have such a good time as kids, and I think they're, they're not getting that this through the new era. My wife doesn't let my children play out on the backs because we don't, they've got like there's a car park sort of behind it, and then there's like a little bit of an area they can play. My wife won't let them play out there because just in case somebody drives up in a car and takes your children. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's why my mum and dad kept me fat because I'm a hell of a fucking unit. <laughs> you can't the back just, of the car. Can't but, just, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to, to, I think it can happen all the time. It can. You conscious? I mean, both both my kids are grown up now. But it's I remember the worry, you know, the the what twenty five and twenty three Nelly, um, and it, the the worry when both of them were growing up. It's, it's terrifying some of the things that you know you, you're constantly watching them. You're going around shops and you're paranoid. You turn around and one of the kids is disappearing. Oh, bloody hell, where have they gone? Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I, obviously I'm not bringing up a load of what's in the news, but obviously been in the news about that 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 poor mm. little child who's who's been acid. Yeah. Attacked. This never happened in our in my no, lifetime. You, and I'll tell you another thing as well. We had no Facebook. We had no social media or anything. No. But I'm saying now, if one of your kids went missing and you couldn't find them, it would be around every single house because it went from house to house to house to house, and people were out there looking for it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It didn't social media. One of the things I always say, and I've had this conversation with my wife and son tonight. This world, the whole world, uh, should run and used to run on respect. Whether it be respect for your parents, whether it be respect for the police, uh, respect for your elders, whatever. For me, respect now is just gone. There's there's very yeah. much respect. We, yeah. we watch a lot of these uh, police programs, whether it be police interceptors or traffic cops, and you listen to the ways for the the, the people talk to the police nowadays. I just I, I, I've sort I've sort of got the the same sort of beliefs as you, and I've also got the other side of it. The thing is, when people were Dixon and Doc Green and stuff like that, and they were all respected and things were fair, if you was a, a bad mister, then you'd get looked after. Unfortunately, when you started going into the 70s and 80s, everything were a little bit different, especially up where I'm up north. It were a total and utter different way they were sorting people out. Mm. It wasn't, you've done a bad thing, then you're in trouble. It were, we're going to tell you that you've done a bad thing. We'll write the statement and smack you. So I, I also feel that the police itself have lost their own respect. Of, of the way they've done, but I also don't I don't feel that um, as a mother and father you should put that onto your children. My children know that if you do something wrong, you're going to jail or you, you you're going to get caught by a policeman. Yeah, that's it. And I, I make sure my, my 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 children have got utmost respect for them policemen. Unfortunately, over my years of, of knowing them, I haven't actually got that quiet respect for them as I did when I was a child because of the things that I've seen happen. Mm. There's a lot of corruption in the world, and unfortunately. To so much is readily available because it's become socia uh, socially accepted that we expect those sort of things. So people are more either more forgiven uh, in that sort of sense because certain things have been allowed more. They people are using it as an excuse rather than not respecting the way things of that of they're meant to work and that. So we, we, yeah. we just. Just, just to go on a bit of sideline, I'm getting into CBs in uh, in chat now as well. So, did you, did you two, did you two guys ever have some? Yeah, Damn. I were a massive CB all the way from being about 11, 12 year old, maybe even a bit younger. Um, I had a number of setups, and my handle was Wolfman. Was it? My handle was Rubber Band. Rubber Band. Mm. CB. Am I am I missing the trick here? Being an you extra don't know what CB is, do you, Dan? No. You oh. youngster, you real youngster. CB before the days of mobile phones. I didn't. I didn't ever have. A, didn't have a mobile phone. And well, I did. I had a mobile phone when I was about probably about thirteen. No, 14, fourteen or fifteen. And I had a Nokia thirty two ten. CB was a, a little radio, so everybody had these radios, and you could have them in your car. You could have like a little car mounted unit. Right. Uh, and you, I used to drive around with a little Ford Fiesta, CB in the front. And a like a you know a three foot mag mount stuck on the top of the Fiesta. Mag mount on top. Yeah. Um, uh, we used to have a, 
when, when I got a bit posh, I had an answer on 99, but it was stuck up on a, a great big scaffolding pole. Uh, and yeah. and, well, it's going to come down eventually. It's going to come down eventually. <laughs> that's so that'd be fine. Swire in your aerial and everything. I had so many setups. Oh, yeah. And if you had mid band and, and little ones in between, you could maybe find um, America yeah. or Australia. I had, I had one of the big, my, my granddad was a big radio ham, and I always wanted to do what he did, but it was, you, had to, you actually had to take a, a college course to be a radio ham used, so I never got around to that, so I had one of these big um, CB radios in the house, a massive great big thing, but like you, I had a dipole outside, and, and we had a big three-story house, and I, I can remember, and, and here's going back to childhood, leaning out of the upstairs window in this big three-story house with a screwdriver and this massive great I think it's about two metre long dipole, screwing it to the window ledge on the outside of the house. My my mother nearly wet herself when she saw me doing that. <laughs> I bet exactly the same. From having the Midlands, um, oh, I'm trying yeah. to think of it. I used to have the President home base because you could either have home base ones or I had all sorts of stuff. And there was used to be a bloke called Cavalier in Doncaster, and he'd be selling it on um, on normally on ninety. Anybody wants a, a CB, blah, 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 and you could go and he'd come and bring it you from Hyde Park, and you could buy stuff. Dad, 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 you know, pocket money, I've got 15 quid. Can you lend me a tenner? What's yeah. all that for? Another one of them bloody stupid CB? Yeah, please. Well, this one swars itself in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one four, one four, one four for a copy. Anybody out there? <clears throat> one nine, one nine for a copy. No, one four, one four. We were on channel 14 now, oh. were we? Yeah, channel 40, but na channel 19 was your main channel. No, we used to use it as on 14. I'm so sure. 19 was your main channel. One uh, nine, a rig check. I'm, I'm older than you, Ed. <laughs> oh, yeah, playing the age it card. It was the main channel, wasn't it? 19. No, 14 was the main channel around us. No, 19, <laughs> 19 were up for everywhere right. with 19. Chat, chat will have to correct us. Was it 14 or 19? One nine, a rig check. One nine, a rig check. Oh, it was always one was four one four for a copy. Fourteen <laughs> were like the second one. What, which one was the one that you had to if you had a problem? Nine were emergency channel. I can't remember that name. Nineteen was for mobile. Fourteen were for home base. See, Dazzy Vape says Defo fourteen. <laughs> yeah, it may be different. No, it, 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 it was definitely nineteen because one nine a rig check. That's where you, where, you, where you got it all. Chunks one nine for a copy. Nine. Yeah, but chunks in ch chunks whales into so that's 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 a built fourteen main channel and bills from around there me as well. Do you know what I've actually still got um, magazines from like the seventies that people had given me as I was doing. I've still got them in a, a big um, suitcase full of them, yeah. and it was called CB something. It was called. I I love CBs. I absolutely loved them to bits. It was, it, it, the thing about it was, it was like YouTube, but um, With radios. you have to wait until the other person Pocket stops talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you used to go, that, 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 well, there's the other thing, isn't it? You used to go around for eye, uh, eyeballs, didn't you? And, yeah, and, they would mess up. Yeah, and, and actually meeting with people. And again, my, my mother hated me, even going back to, what was that, be the sort of mid to late days? Twenty where uh, Doncaster, uh, Chuck Meister. Uh, but yeah, it, the thing used to meet people, uh, I'll tell you what, though, but, how strange would that be now? You're meeting a, you were sat there as a 14 year old kid and you're meeting somebody who were like 19, 20. Your mum and dad go, whoa, what's happening? Hey, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. What's his name, Rolf? No, yeah, it was good. They were, uh, I, I, I love my CB radio. I don't need a drink because I'm thirsty. I suppose if you lived in London and uh, with loads of people using CBs, you probably wouldn't get uh, any chance to talk, would you? Yeah, but this was it. You never, you never got the the, the the channels were never full. It was always a punt when you went onto channel fourteen to try and find somebody to talk to. Fourteen one four, not nineteen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got number 14 on your card, please mark it off. <laughs> CBB. One then. for a rig check. I've never heard that in my life. No, one four, one four for a copy. It used to be one nine a rig check. Well, maybe one nine was And then you used to get some nutter eventually, you know, when it all got a bit strange, you used to get somebody who thought you were a DJ on, on Charlie oh, yeah. One. Yeah. The most brilliant setup, completely making all the other channels fade on either side of him. Sat there playing Abba. 
and carpenters. <laughs> I'm sitting on top of the world and I'm fuck off, mate. <laughs> it's, that's, that's, there's something you said about legal. CB is still legal. We still have a shop up the road that still sells CB stuff, so I'm assuming they are. You used to have to have a license, didn't you? Um, you, you, ha have, you have, you have to, to now. I think you have to stay off of um, police uh, emergency channels because you will get police come up to you. They can locate you now and they will ask you to uh, switch the channel. No, we used to be able to lock, used to be a fancy then we used to all shit ourselves. Somebody <laughs> sent a thing round it and go, right, there's um what were they called? DTI or something like that. DTI oh, is coming yeah. round, remember it? So, DTI yeah. is coming round to, you, shit, I've got no license. So you're going round back, you know like when lightning used to come down, your mum used to turn up televisions on. But I see you'd be running round going, Fucking hide in the aerial, throwing air and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do anything like that. What's all about it's a close then? You're only allowed to output so much power as well, were you? what it was now but you were, you were limited if you went over yeah we used to sit down at DTI everyone in everybody in DTI is coming round turn everything fucking off don't touch anything <laughs> that's real right honestly DTI and people used to do it on purpose just to clear channels so all the little kids used to go shit I've not got a, I've not got a license to take all my stuff away from me <laughs> trying to remember uh, certain things I saw on TV years ago did people used to climb up uh Telephone poles just to be able, uh, just to be able to get a better signal with their uh, CVs then. No, no, no. Uh, that's just TV. Then. Just TV. I, 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 I don't want to fucking break it, see, but Santa's not real either. Santa's <laughs> <laughs> no. still taking his teeth out, leaving it underneath the uh, pillar. <laughs> Back onto vape stuff. Oh yeah. Oh. Well, 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 I've been trying to see. <laughs> Somebody else brought up there. Did you have a linear? Where you have a linear, you know, used to boost your signal. Uh, jewels are now available in the UK, was that, uh, Coily? <laughs> yeah, that was the other news story. Jewel. Oh, right, so, yeah, straight back to your, your news stories. I forgot about that. We've just killed 45 <laughs> minutes for that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the Jewel UK Vapors can finally get a Jewel. Um, the most popular and controversial American vaping brand is now taking aim at the second, second largest vape market in the world. The Jewel went on sale this week in the UK. Oh, I don't have to say ju the, that No, one. you're supposed to say Jewel. Jewel. Um, but the product will be significantly different than the device that's making the US tobacco companies shake in their boots. Um, sort of reading through the line, uh, reading between the lines, there's a whole lot of stuff it goes into. But obviously, the UK version is 20 milligram, uh, whereas I think the US version is it 50, 50 milligram. I can't, I can't remember that figures. I'll have a troll through that while we talk about it. But yeah, the, the only difference between the two is that it's a, a lower, lower nicotine level in the in the UK dual. Yeah, I did see that. Um, there was a post which I also saw, which came out, I think. I think it was on uh, Friday or Saturday saying that they're possibly going to be releasing a new uh, higher nicotine, but they're going to I don't they're going to work some way around it. They're saying that the pull that you actually get off the jewel uh, with the lower nicotine isn't enough to satisfy a um, uh, someone who's just quit smoking. Yeah, sorry, Bill, well, Bill, one other thing, Bill Richards has just said there the difference in price as well. The yeah. UK version is significantly cheaper than the US version. Yeah, significantly cheaper. It's uh, I think it's thirteen dollars for the UK version, where it's fifteen uh, fifteen ninety nine for the American one. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Talking of pods, that just reminded me of one thing that I, I really wound me up this week. I, so I said I absolutely love this little Aspire Sprite thing, but why the flip have they created a pod that has that sits? I don't know if you can see it. There, sit at an angle. Sits, sits on a slant and when you take the top off why didn't they make it so that when you took the top off to put the top on the bottom that it actually makes it flat and I can't even get it on at all now but when you, when you put the bot bottom on the oh, that's completely the wrong way around when you put the bottom the, the cap on the bottom it's even more slanty than it was without it, it, it's bonkers these companies that are paid to do the designs for these products it drives me absolutely insane. Surely somebody must have sort of thought of something so simple to make it a flat bottom, or at least when you take the top off, make it flat. 
That's my yeah. rant out now. That's like that. that, that. No, so, so I've what? not seen that that bug system. I've not had it, so I'm not quite sure how it works. So it, it just it has. It, it it does not it doesn't sit. I can't put my desk on because my desk's an absolute shit hole. Um, but it, it sits on a slant, so it sits like that. Yeah. Move your fingers. But the top has like a slant on it as well. And like I said, you would have thought that when you took the top off, it'd make it so that it would sit on less of a slant. But it doesn't. It sits on more of a slant. So anyway, sorry. Yeah, no, no you, you get plenty of these a bit mad with the actual. Um... <clears throat> Alright, I'm just looking what we've got. We're doing pretty well, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you go give us a thumbs up to make sure everybody knows that we're live and make sure you share that we are live. Um, yeah, the, the pod system can be a bit weird. It's like, um, I saw dug it out somewhere, which is the IQ. And that's basically like a, an iPod with, with a. It's like a. How can I explain it? You know, like the charging bit you'd have an iPod. Yeah. It's like the bit on the top, and that's your actual clothes on it. Um, they're weird, and there's a few other, you know, where you don't quite fit right. Or yeah, you got those square, you got those square them. ones that are like a pebble now, and they they don't stand up at all. They just sit on their side. Yeah, you see, I've got the um, the Joyset one, the Edge, the X, the Exceed Edge. That that has nowhere standing up. That just lies flat. Um, yeah. I've got the Mini Fit, which obviously just lies flat, which is just like a little USB stick. And yeah. then Mark from Nature by P sending me this C106 something like that, which is a little pod system. Um, I'll try that and see what that's like. That's kind of on holiday with me as well. I suppose a lot of people um, are prob well, it's not pod related, but I mean a lot of people are probably looking forward to uh, Posty's uh, device. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The what was it? The uh, the FP. FP, yeah, which stands, yeah, which stands for yeah, so yeah, so it stands for. What was it? So, the foot pig. The foot pig. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's going to be nice. I, I, obviously, I, I don't know if I'm going to be one of the people to get it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's out ready to go to to the reviewers, so we'll see when it comes out. Looks a really nice design. Um, let's see what happens. I think, I mean, he, uh, Mark's all about flavour, isn't he? That's what he's, he's really sort of turns him on is the flavour. And I think that for, for me, if it's a really good, if it's a 30 mil, 30 mil RTA, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah, but um, it's a, <coughs> it's apparently a <coughs> TPD compliant uh, tank. <laughs> but if it, if it's all about flavour, because I that's the only reason that I don't go for these massive tanks because they seem to drop. The flavour. The, the, yeah. The, now, now the, Mr. Coyle, obviously, if uh, our tech guy. Was on his uh, ball. We might have been able to have talked about this a little bit earlier. Oh dear! <laughs> <laughs> I I just remembered about it just now. I was like, oh wait, yeah, Mark's got his uh, Mark's got his scent coming out soon. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he won't he won't be sending yeah, me one, but yeah. Who I know it now. <laughs> Les, he did, he did <laughs> when I meant pebble, I meant that it's, it's not flat on any side. It can't sit upright on any side. You can't even lay it down flat. It wobbles, just like a pebble would. <laughs> What? Uh, I can't think of what the actual thing's called now. I don't want to cause uh, any more lost frames, so I'm going to have to look it up on my phone. <laughs> right then. So, have we got any more news, Kikuski? So, I thought I'd, I, I was going to throw in a little bit of... Um, oh, actually, you're going to have to go with me. I'll just find the link. I, th I thought it'd be quite nice to have a bit of... Not that we haven't not, not talked about non-vape-related stuff today, uh, but I thought every week it might just be nice to have a bit of non-vape-related news as well, with possibly a bit oh, of yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, But the big news for me this week was that Anne Summers are now doing virtual parties. You can actually have an Anne Summers party online. But we won't be able to go. I certainly won't be able to go, because they don't allow men. So that was, that was the... One of the highlights of my week from there. Was it? Did it make yeah, your it whole week? Yeah, it did. I thought that was great. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever actually? Uh, one of my biggest, biggest remembers of an Anne Summer party. Me and Lou had a pub, and um, I think we're, I think it were Daniel. Were it Daniel just been born? And I'm sat upstairs, and we had this great big. Um, I'm going to say fanny party then. <laughs> Anne Summer's party. And we've stuck some uh, strippers on and a drag act and all this stuff. And man, it were amazing. But what they forgot was that we had CCTV. <laughs> so me and my mate, who was the uh, uh, the bar manager, we sat upstairs, put a little into bed and just watched all these women. And I'll tell you what, they are worse than men. Oh, yeah. 
But didn't you find that? I know we I know we talk about DJ and I'm not sure that I've mentioned this before. I think I probably have actually now thinking about it. But right. I, I I found in the latter few years of my DJ that the biggest problems came from the ladies that were on the dance floor rather than the men. I always found it's a woman who's dressed in double denim. Yeah, yeah. She's always going to be the woman who's going to come up and she wants to press your buttons and pull your plonker. Um, she, I she never had that. And, and everything everything you're playing is no good for you. And they do that, turn it off, turn it off. Yeah, like you're going to turn it off halfway yeah. through. Yeah. Turn it off. Yeah. If well, then she, she's the woman who comes up right at the end when you can't play anymore. She goes, come on, you've been absolutely wonderful. Play some more. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and if you if you put something good on, if you put such and such on, everybody will get up and dance. Really? Yeah. yeah. Or will you just get up and dance and everybody will get everybody else will go and sit I down. actually had that. We were, we were sat at a wedding and I can't remember exactly what song it was, but it was something obscure. I think it was actually um, oh, what's his name? The French bloke. Da, 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 da. What's his name? French bloke. Uh, I don't know. 80s, Quift over there. Oh, no idea. <laughs> oh, what's his name? Roxy Music. Oh, right, Brian Ferry. Yeah, Brian Ferry. That, nah, 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 nah. Dance floor is absolutely jam packed. Yeah. They're absolutely dancing loads, as you wanted one of the slow ones from him. Something like Jealous Guy or something like that. What a tit. Yeah, I'm going to play. Yeah, everybody will dance. Everybody is dancing. It's it, it just it always you always have the classic lines don't you that you get from people that are uh, 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 disco and and just it, they, they used to really really crack me like I said the the the, the key word oh, oh can I can I have a go can I have a go mate can you can yeah. I plug my phone in and have a go yeah right oh of course you can <coughs> unfortunately in Bill Bryan there wasn't in the Second World War <laughs> um, like, yeah it is yeah everybody they want to go. Do you, but do you ever get those when you're vaping as well? Can I have a go on your mod, mate? Can I have a go on your mod? Can I have a try? It's when you get 13-year-olds coming up to you and you're like, hell no. <laughs> Christ me. Yeah, I don't, I don't sort of do them parties, do they? I don't know if you're... Uh, no, like, this, is, you're this, is when, this is when you're walking down the street and you get a kid come up to go, oh, that's well cool, mate. Let me have a puff. It's like, how old are you? You're still wearing diapers, aren't you? <laughs> <It's off>. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way in this world that any kid would ever come over to me in this way, I'll tell you now. They'd be like, whoa. <clears throat> that was the thing when I was... You saying a bit about me being a big bloke. In all the years that I was DJing, I never had one bit of trouble. I don't know about you, Ed. Yeah, no, I don't have any, no. no. And, and I used to do a lot of travel weddings as well, and they were a real good crap. There was always trouble, there was always fights, and there was always bottles thrown. But they were a fantastic one, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they, yeah, they are, as well as they, they give you plenty of money as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's always yeah. aunties, uncles, left Goobers, funeral or something. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. See, we, we run a pub which had plenty of them in it, and uh, I had, we got maybe a lot of them. But um, unfortunately, there's a small minority, especially older now. So years ago, you used to have the, the head of them used to sort your trouble out. It's, it's a bit different now. Yeah, but then, it's like I said, they never, ever... I never ever got any trouble. I was always left well alone. You know, I was always the, the sort of left to my own devices. I, I did one go up one night, and I was on for I think about half an hour before it all kicked off, and that was it. I just stood there for the rest of the night and watched them all fighting. But it was yeah. I've got it. Oh yeah, the, the, the major stuff is obviously when I was singing. I'm on it there, same. I've, I've, we, we were doing five nights a week. We're in Brannigan's, Yates's, and it, it were. A, Obviously, it was my main living, and like I said, I did it for a lot, a lot of years. And I've sat down there and I've watched more fights. So you just stop and watch it happen. As long as they don't come anywhere near your equipment, if they do, then they get a jab with mic stand and you're on your way. I've fought in clubs. I've all sorts where people have been arseholes. And... But I don't know about you. You get into sort of an age where you don't really want. We were talking about it earlier, me and Luke. Years ago, half the stuff that happens nowadays, I'd have been, right, I'm going to get smack. Yeah. Nowadays you don't want to do it, you just want to leave it alone. You don't want to you're going to get stabbed either nowadays. No, that's the thing. I mean, I I, I used to be, I, I always wanted to join the police when I was younger, that was all I wanted to do. Um, but I wouldn't want to do that now. I'm, I'm so pleased I didn't go into that. So yeah, the police have such a, such a tough job. Threatened to play I Am The Music Man. I Am The Music Man was great. I was one of these DJs, I always used to like to play the shit music at the end of the night. Uh, and it was Music Man, Sweet Caroline. Uh, yeah. Monkey's Daydream Believer, 
country roads are just the, I, I love all that stuff oh, yeah, 500 it's, miles it is, <laughs> the, the cheese does very well if you, you're on fence you've got to know what your, your market is if you sat down there with your kid's birthday party you're not going to play that you're going to play a load of uh, up to date stuff um, but yeah the cheese really does work it does and, and you get I, I did weddings I'm going completely off, off track on vape stuff here but I used to do weddings where people come to me and say I had one where they said right I want you to do my wedding but I don't want you to play any 80s I don't want you to play any 90s I don't want you to play any boy bands any girl bands no cheese no YMCA well what do you want me to play what yeah. and, and she says if anybody comes up and asks you for them you tell them no they're not having it and they have to come and speak to me and you just think you know you pay a DJ to do a job yeah, the, the, the worst one that you get is where they come up to you and you've got one side of the family who give you a list. And they say, play these. So you play to a list is what they've given you. Which I always like, lists, if you want them playing, I will play them and try my best to wind you all up and have a bit of a giggle. And then you get the other part of the family who don't want that stuff. And they go, why have you played that? Because she told me to play it. <laughs> Do you not really want to listen to Actually, one of my worst songs ever is Paradise of the Dashboard Light. I don't like that. Oh, yeah, but Paradise by the Dashboard Light was... You could play that. Eight that was eight minutes long, yeah. Uh, that, that was a, a great song if you wanted, again, the time when I was smoking. Shit, yeah, I, I, had, that, I, I, I had loads of... Um, what do you call it, mate? Loads of fillers, you know, what lasted for hours. Which I've still got. Uh, Bill Bryan. I had somebody try to stab me once, so I broke his arm. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere near a plastic fork with Bill Bryan. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Richards, sorry. Bill Richards, don't get a plastic fork or you're in trouble. Don't speak him with a spork either. <laughs> but, well, I think we've done pretty well here, people. Um, obviously, there's been other people uh, on this sort of time, but we've kept their numbers keep running. I think you two have been absolutely fantastic. Um, do you think it's maybe time that we did a bit of Ask the Caster? I think, I think so. it's a good time, yeah. If people want to go put the questions out, let us know. Yeah, and we can keep running. Um, I've, I've got one for Dan. Um, Dan, where? what's the new thing that's going to be happening to you as a reviewer? Have you got something new that's going to happen? or? Um, okay, so at the moment, obviously, I'm going to be setting up the uh, the office or slash studio, whatever, going to make it as best I can. Uh, with the new um, setup, I'm probably going to start looking at possibly changing my artwork since it's coming up to a year now um i st uh, so the 10th of august uh was the turning point when i decided i was going to start doing reviews um so i really think i need to kick it up a gear change things a bit around and uh maybe a fresh look and that so um, yeah it's always nice to be coming with a fresh look uh twisted i think i've caught a couple of your videos mate keep going bro yep um it's i think there's a number of people who are coming up and running and Jumping on that subs, a lot of them are getting so many subs, I ain't got a clue where they're coming from. They're doing really, really well. Good for MF Vapes. In that yeah, thousand, congrats there, think, Mike. That was really good. Last, I think in the last two weeks, I think he's hit about 250 subscribers. So he's done really, really well. Um, keep it going, mate. If you're getting that amount of subscribers and views, you're hitting the top side, mate. Won't be long till you're in uh, in the ten thousand. So keep going, mate. Mm. I, I, I I know Mike, and I, I watch quite a few of his reviews. He's he's one of the guys where he goes out and he buys all his own stuff to review. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the the main thing with us uh, smaller reviews, we do have to buy our own stuff. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I, I had to invest a lot of money into moving um, and other different things. So that's why not having the stuff to review has been an issue. Uh, obviously, I've got juices, but juices don't get as many views as hardware. So I've got to balance it out somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but how long have you been going, mate? It'll be a, it'll be a year in August. Yeah, so. you, you've, got to take, you've got to take each little bit as it comes, mate. And we all started on juices, and I don't get millions of stuff sent. It's just that's how you got to do. You just got to start off as, as you're doing, then. and you're doing good doing what you're doing now. Being yeah. people getting your name out and and stuff like it's like Salford. Salford's a brilliant reviewer. I think he must be coming up to around about a year now. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like Salford. Saint yeah. Saint has been sat in chat and he's probably only been sat here for the whole two hours waiting to see his his coil come off the printer. So uh. I've just I've just pulled it off for him there now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so there you are. That'll be in the post for you tomorrow, Saint. And and 
he's ordered a, or he's ordered a second one to get the second bit of his name on the second one as well. All right. <laughs> so, hope that's okay for you, Saint. Hey, that's absolutely fantastic. Four months, two hundred and eleven yeah, subs. You can't moan here, mate. You've done well. Aiden, second of August will be here, mate. And you've done really well as well. You just got to keep going. Um, it, it's a very hard thing. I was very, very lucky. We always talk about it, very lucky that I was brought onto this network, um, and then I was brought onto different bits and bobs, and it, it pushed my my subscriber count up, which I'm nearly at one thousand five hundred. So I'm, I'm pretty lucky with what I've got and I'm doing, and it. I don't, I don't stick reviews out like I used to, um, but yeah, it's good, and I think all of you out there who are doing it, especially the right people like the MFs, Salford, you're putting mm. a lot of effort into it, and I wish you all the best, I really hope everything works out for you, and you get a couple of good companies to get hold of you, I'm pretty lucky, I've got Joy Tech and I've got Paptio, you know, we'll keep doing that sort of stuff, it's, it's pretty good. Mm. I think Kerry had a good uh, a good point there that she said um, you lot should start a hardware share each buy something and swap it around among yourselves to review. Yeah, it's it's a it's a massive hard thing to do that though because as soon as somebody's got something out, you, you're aiming to try and get things out before other people. If I'm honest with you, nowadays because yeah. you, Vic will tell you and you'll you even my brother and everybody else, you're getting people getting items that are in for five days and then the even juices, mm. and they are sat there and they're sending them out straight away. They've not tested them. Yeah, a lot of people getting them, the receive box, them on the day, doing them. a review, and review that's it. it. They're not even testing it. It's a bit I, like I have, um, I have one to two weeks at least to each bit that I do, and if it don't come out on they want it, then I do it how long I need it to be done. But then, does it matter? And again, I'm not the review on here, but does it matter how long people wait to see a review? If you look at um, Jared, the vaping go. Mm. He's reviewing stuff now that's that's like two two years old, um, and he's still getting people, you know, watching those reviews of, of old of old kit. Yeah. Because you know yeah. some of the stuff was really good. You will get, you're gonna you're gonna get that, and you probably get I don't know what he, he actually gets on his his channel. I don't know what he's getting 120 150 views for what he's got. I could stick an old tank out and get that as well because you 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 view is and your actual loyal support base will actually do that. But to try and bring new people in, they, they, they're not, you're not going to get that new people. You're only going to get what's actually the people who subscribe to you and watch it all the time. Yeah. But, so, but if you come out with a new, brand new drop that's just come out, you know what I mean? Drop solo, you're going to get solo, yeah. brand new people watching your, your YouTube channel. But as a new reviewer, is it not a good way to, obviously for you as a new reviewer, to get experience doing reviews, reviewing the old stuff? Um, and and people are, people are still going to watch it. I mean, I if I'm looking for something in particular, I'll go on YouTube and I'll try and find. I, it, it doesn't matter when it was reviewed, or I suppose who's reviewing it. I'll, I'll always look for the reviews. Yeah, that I know. If, if somebody's looking for the up to date um, vape stuff, they're not going to be putting in for a, an old limitless tank, are they? You might get some people who do, but to get the up to date, if you look at Vic, after if he didn't do the up to date stuff that was completely coming out all the time look what I've got, I've got this brand new, I've got that brand new you, you wouldn't be start moving up to 40,000 or over 40,000 because people want to know the new stuff not the old stuff it's like going back and trying to review some hang scent juice yeah, yeah you, might, you, might, you might get 15, 20 people who will actually watch it but they're the only people who are actually on your channel supporting you properly does that make sense? Mm. Needs yeah. to be up to date stuff. Well, I mean, there's been certain things that I've held back from review, uh, putting a review out on a bit like this um, via 240 because I'm currently waiting for the new firmware to come out. And a lot of people have reviewed this already. Um, and the issue is it does not hit the voltage which it says it should. Um, so I've got it to 105 watts and it still doesn't beat 95 from my Tesla. And it's got the same, uh, same build in. <laughs> I was having this conversation with somewhere about somebody about firmware today, um, and I was saying I'll I, I rarely update the firmware in the mod because um, if if it's working, I'm absolutely terrified of it. It's like the Windows update. If Windows update's working fine, just leave it alone. I won't update unless it really forces. I think it. Les, it's the nail on the as well. But the the unfortunate thing that sort of happened, and it's the back end of me starting to review. Um, there's so many promoters out there. There's not. They're not reviewers. No. Promoters, and you can find 
lots of them, lots of them. And you can see that that's what they're doing, they're just promoting stuff, they're not actually um, reviewing it. You've got to think, like, again, I keep going to Vic, because I use him as a, a, the way how he does. There's lots of companies that don't talk to him anymore because he didn't like a certain product. Mm. But if you don't like it, you don't like it. I'm sorry, I don't like it. I've got lots of people who won't deal with me anymore because I've told them that I don't like their product. So. Yeah, but is it, is it, that that brings out a good point, though, is um, how many people that are new vapors won't know the difference between a reviewer and a promoter. So if if you get if you get somebody who started vaping and they go off and they watch, um, Christ, I can't remember his name now, with a beard. No, there a lot of us got beards. No, but, uh, <laughs> uh, the one, the one who's the, the million subscribers. Oh, oh, what? Um, yeah, uh, Rip Trippers. Rip Trippers. Yeah. So you get the likes of Rip Trippers, who's blatantly a promoter, and then you look at something like yourself, Aiden, or Dan, or Vic, or you know, Vaping Postman, or whoever, who are reviewers. How does how does a new vapor know the difference? You know, Rip's going to go on there and say this tank's great; it's the best thing since sliced bread. And that that new vapor is going to go out and buy that product as well. Well, the thing is to if when you watch a Rip Tripper's video, um, generally he is pretty much all pros with probably a little tiny con. So it, even uh, some of uh, some of the reviews we put out would be like, don't like this. A bit like um, the Vanny Vape Mesh. A lot of us didn't like. Um, no juice well. Um, it was better as a single coil than putting a mesh in sort of thing because the mesh was just too close to the uh, mouth, uh, mouthpiece sort of thing and uh, he would just he would give all the good bits little t tiny bit of bad bit but he would always finish it on high some of us was like no we can't use this it's too it's not the way we vape sort of thing you can only use it a certain way um sort of thing so yeah it's it's all it's all about how a, a, how a view is constructed um and some there's going to be products which you're going to like and you're not going to like other people going to like and then uh, you're not going to like but I think it's the way it's structured if uh, if a reviewer is just pure like yeah yeah I've got sent this out this is absolutely amazing amazing you get the device that's absolutely shockingly bad doesn't do uh, can't manage your uh, wattage or anything given bad uh, dry hits and that that's where you're starting to realise oh wait that person is a promoter they're just purely and sent something, giving them a good boost, so they get more free shit. The problem the is you free shit. Faith in review. If I, if, if, so, and, and obviously I, I know reviewing is subjective, hmm. but I lose faith in somebody if somebody says this is the best thing since sliced bread, and you actually get it, it turns out to be shit because that's my hard-earned money that you persuaded me to spend yeah, that's on it. something that you say is good, and it actually turns out to be a piece of crap. You've, you've only got to be able to put it to what you could, you actually made before. Now, if you're sat down there getting G classes and you're getting all these other massive. Now, see, you've got the elitist stuff. reviewers as well. This is absolutely shit compared to that. But if you're sat down there to a normal person who's vaping the normal shizney that's happening, that's what you can give a good um, analysis of how it works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm constantly on the, the lookout for the best flavour tank. And I. Out of all the tanks that I've got, and I don't know how many it is now, but I've probably only got three or four that I really, really rate on flavour. And and the majority of the reviews that I've seen for those tanks have been, you know, outstanding. So, you know, it's, it's, this is why I sort of appreciate it's subjective, but also why I think it's so difficult for somebody who's new to vaping to understand the difference between a reviewer and a promoter and make an informed decision on what they want to buy based on what that person said. Yes, what I found it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, dire things you said, you can be positive on stuff without being misleading. And that is by, I, I, in my opinion, that is by going into detail what is um, positive with it, what you're liking about it, and actually explaining how it's, why, how and why it's positive in your mindset sort of thing and I mean that's a sort of a persuasive side of it it's not it's not influencing you're actually putting your point across rather than oh it gives me a good vape mm. or I could produce massive clouds of it I mean I, I honestly respect viewers proper reviewers 100% because you have such a difficult job because you've got to obviously review a product you've got to give uh, a sort of a truthful all right subjective view on it but you still obviously want to get products from from said companies to review in the future, so you know you've got to sort of try and. Good evening, Scuba. Uh, you've got to try and Ruby. try and negotiate that line of. of I, I was trying to do a shit sandwich. It's something I was trying to do. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what's what I like about it, and I'll tell you what I don't like about it. I was trying to 
that you've got some reviewers out there who say this is absolutely fucking shit, don't buy it. You know, you've got your TVPs, you've got your double vapors. I try and do a bit of a shit sandwich. Because yeah, what they say might not be said by somebody else. Yeah, but, but that that's case in point, isn't it? Because you do. I I look across. If I'm looking at one product, I'll I'll watch three different reviewers, and I'll watch somebody who I think is focused on flavour. I'll think look at somebody who's who's focused on build quality and reliability, and I'll try and get a cross section all those different reviews to determine whether I'm going to buy something or not. So, so we've got people on there. We've got reviewers who absolutely hate um, pod systems. Yeah, you got. Uh, but they well, specialise in. Well, I'll say, well, pod system's really good for a different type of vapor. Now, a, a lot of reviewers nowadays are more on to what you're dripping, what your big clouds are coming from. They're not going back to the starter kits. They're not trying to think of it. And if they do do, they're still they're got coming. in their head what a big kit should do. And what, well, you've got to think what that person's thinking at the time. Who's this aimed at? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, to be, I think, a good <coughs> review in this point in time, um, you've got your elitists and that, and then you've got uh, people who, I mean, I, I think the best way we can be helping people as a reviewer is you want to be looking at products which they can afford, uh, especially for people that are just quitting, and they're looking for products which are going to benefit them most to be able to quit. You want to be able to provide that sort of service so you don't want to be getting all the g classes all the staple uh, stab woods um mods and that you yeah okay it's nice to have one occasionally but i mean who's going to be able to just go off and buy a 300 pound mod uh bunny you hit the name on the head sweet so. yeah i just read that same comment it's absolutely spot on to be honest yeah but then all a lot of these companies now don't seem to be able to take the criticism when you listen to a lot of the reviewers talking they're all saying, you know, if you listen to uh, to Vic and Post, if you listen to Vic, they're all saying, I gave this product a bad review, and they weren't sending it anymore. I've not had this, I've not had a product from them anymore. To me, that's just so wrong, and they're, they're, surely they're just showing themselves up by not doing it. Well, that's it. Uh, they stop sending things, and that, and then they give themselves a bad rep because they couldn't take the critic, uh, the no, the constructive criticism which may have been listed. Okay, uh, Posty might be a bit more blunt with the way he presents his, but I mean, with uh, with say the likes of Vic, he might just be saying, "You just missed something on the spot there. You could have just added this, and it would have made it so much better." But unfortunately, or he might have compared it to another product, saying it's something like this was two years ago, mm. sort of thing, and say. You need you need to bring yourselves back up to speed to the new stuff coming out, the new Vanny Vape or the new Geek Vape. Compare yourselves to that to improve your products, yeah. sort of thing. That's uh, and so then he all of a sudden he stops getting products sent to him. That's yeah. Just just one other thing. Just just sorry to put in, but use something you said. Use some, something you said, Aiden, as well as is reviewers. You know they're not interested in pods. They're interested in this. For me, there's far too much boxing of vapors now. I vape RDAs, I vape RTAs, I vape top stock tail stock coil tanks, I vape pod systems. For me, that's 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 a really for, personally, I think it's a bad thing because I'm a vapor. I vape. I use RTAs when I'm in the mood. I use an RDA whether it be on a mech or a swanker. Uh, I use a pod when I'm in the house. I use a mouth to lung tail and a tank when I'm in the house. So I I sort of pretty much vape across the board. Mm. And, and I'm not a, I'm not an RDA snob. I don't just say I vape. I just use an RDA. I'm not using anything else. Fair enough for people who do. If that's what they like, then that's fine. But I think it, it's it's a very dangerous thing to start boxing vapors into, or so, sorry, putting vapors into little boxes of this is what you should be doing. This is what you should be. I find uh, different vape products are good for different situations. Like pod systems are great if you're on the road a lot and you just want a quick vape and you're not having to um, fill it up all the time. Just get your nicotine fixed because you've got a salt, your high um, MG salt neck in there and you just take a puff of that and you're off on your way again. If you're going to hang about down the pub all day, you probably want to be on this, something a bit more powerful just so you're getting a, a nice sensation. You're just enjoying yourself really, isn't it? So it's an enjoyment uh, device. So you might have an RDA um, or if you're just out and about walking through town, you're going to be using something like a tank just so you're not having to fill up all the time whilst you're walking around town. Sort of thing. So all eat loads of different vape products to work around all different situations. Sort of thing. So, um, and some people just might want to vape something straight because they are mouth to lunger. They are going to. Also, a reviewer needs to review what he knows. Yeah. 
and I think uh, it was something that when I first ever started reviewing, I didn't really know much about RDAs or anything like that, so I stuck to what I knew. Uh, but you juice, and then I you, moved on to start kids. You, you and Mark and a lot of the other reviewers tend to cover a lot of different things, don't you? You do pods, you do tanks, you do different styles of uh, sorry, you do mods. You do tanks, you do uh, pod systems, you do rebuildables. So you, you, you cross the board. Yeah, but I never did start off like that. Um, no, no. I started off because I didn't know it. So yeah. I don't want to come across trying to be an idiot and pretend that I know what I'm on about. And you get a lot of reviews who sit down there who, who pretend that they know that what they're on about and they don't. And you, yeah. you, you as a reviewer know it. Um, you sit down there, you try your best to show what... what and that's why I still, if you look a lot of, at my beginning of hardware, it was all pod systems or starter kits. Mm-hmm. So I knew what they were about, and I knew how they worked. Now I didn't. I'm not going to suddenly get there and met mod and pretend I know everything about it because that's yeah. not something that I vape. I don't vape met mods. I don't like them. It's not something that turns me on. Um, my fingers don't fit around the bottom of it, and in my eyes, it's a bomb in the wrong eye. Somebody who doesn't know how to use it, it can be a bomb. So I just stay away from it. Yeah. So the only mod uh, mech that I've reviewed has actually been the uh, BF box because I thought it was great for the price of it if you wanted to go down the road of having your first squonk for the regulated squonk started making the appearance and that be more affordable I thought it was great if you wanted to get into squonking just to show the product um, and obviously explain to people like right okay do not go down this road if you do not have any sense of Ohm's law or battery uh, safety because as soon as you're going to start messing around with uh, not non-safety devices so uh, devices like this that don't have a chip if you don't know your what voltage you can run through your coils uh, and that you're going to get thermal runaway and then you're going to be one of these stupid people in the news with a blown up uh, device and give them vaping a bad name again I think it's all on it says it all there unless you are um, somebody who's knowledgeable into vaping and also your own as well about battery safety a met mod is not for you, but then you're gonna get you're getting a lot of um you know like your your bricks and mortar people turn up, they're not telling them these things and No, that's it. I've come this and Yeah. I've had to tell off about uh, two local companies just purely for the fact they were they made uh because it was their mates they gave a device to. They called them up, whacked a uh, whacked a battery in the tube mod, gave them the tube mod, say here have a hit of this and that and then I've caught up with them and they're running a, something along the lines of a 0.06 or whatever it was and they were run, uh, just running off a uh, 20 amp battery and it's like whoa slow you down there mate you've only just started vaping and you've got a grenade in your hand there sort of thing it's like yeah so Mark, Mark laughs at me because Mark, Mark it's not a bomb it's not a bomb it's not this and it, we, we have had more arguments about it and he laughs at me it's like it's a laugh at me but I'm trying to say from the other side to somebody who doesn't know what they're on about, and that's my whole point of it. If you know what you're doing, stay away from them. They are a bomb, and they are literally a bomb. But the other thing that I would say on that, Aiden, is even if you do know what you're doing, you be careful. I mean, I, again, yeah. I, I bring everything back to, to motorcycling. Um, <clears throat> you know, I was a biker for, what, 10, 11 years, uh, and I've not had a bike for a few years now, but even when I was an experienced biker, I was still... It comes back to this respect thing. I respected my bike, and I was always there was always that bit of um, sort of being frightened of the bike to a certain extent because it makes you respect it, it makes you understand it. And for me, even if you're an experienced vapor, you should still respect, respect it. Yeah, yeah. You should still make sure you know what you're doing, and even when you know what you're doing, respect it because you know it'll soon. Well, I don't you know say it, but... not into me. I just really don't like them. I don't. I don't like how you fit your finger underneath. It doesn't fit properly for me, and it, it's not something I quite like. So, it's, but that's each to their own. Exactly. Yeah, and, and it'd be boring if we were all the same. Wouldn't it? We'd have nothing to talk yeah. about if we all made mm. pod systems. We'd have absolutely nothing to talk about. Oh, that'd except be boring. Pretty stupid little <laughs> angle things on pods. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, it would be right, ladies and gentlemen. You've got five minutes to stick your questions in and make them as dirty as you can. <laughs> the day you don't fear the bike, your bike yeah. what was that? exactly the day you don't fear your bike is the day you should stop riding one and that yeah. is so so true 
you know, you yeah, see, so um, Bonnie is obviously a big, same as my father-in-law, he's massive into his bikes, and uh, it's been sad to lose quite a number of the people who have been lost over the, not just in the um, TT, there's been a few other as well, haven't there? Yeah, the old man's into a, all his bikes, and yeah, it's been sad. It yeah. has. But the thing about it is, you've got to think, th these people push for the need for speed. If you look at Dunlop, they always pushed for that extra, don't they? Exactly, but that's, that's, that's what they do, isn't it? But even so, you know, a lot of these guys that are the successful racers, as Bunny says, are the ones that respect the bikes. They respect the machines that they're riding. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things you can't account for, you know, it's, uh, I think when I was always riding bikes, I was always told that it wasn't the bike that was the dangerous, again, you know, you talk about vapours and vapours are always the bad ones, it's not, it's not the, 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 the bikers that are the danger on the road, it's the, it's the car drivers that are the danger on the road, I mean, it, when I was riding bikes, I came off a far safer driver than I was before I started riding bikes, because you are so aware of everything. Mm. So aware of everything that's going on the on the on the road at that time. Like you said, it's see, you see, I, I watched another thing uh, um, about I don't know you saw it on the internet. I think it's really cool. It's absolutely wonderful sitting there with a GoPro on his head, watching his bike go up to 183 miles an hour. It's just one of them where you think you can't do that, mate. Was there was yeah. a bike wasn't it wheeling wheeling at 185 miles an hour? It's on the news I saw earlier in the week. And that, that, that again. That, more people who haven't been doing that, and then some idiots open the car door, or they've pulled yeah. it in front of them, and they've not been doing no speed or anything like that, and it's just because the other drivers haven't looked where they are. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And then them idiots are doing that on a bike like that, and you think, you're just stupid. Yeah, it's again, it just sets the, it sets the, or gives everybody else a bad, <laughs> everybody else a bad name for the for the stupid idiots that. Well, we have it yeah. in the vaping industry as well. We have these massive cloud blowers and massive cloud blowing's fine. Oh, you can wow. blow as many clouds as you want, but don't go out and do it in the street. It it makes me cringe when I walk down the street and I see somebody vaping a bloody great big cloud into a great big crowd of people. People, yeah. You just think I, I was sat. I was at Monk's Cross in York on. Sunday, yeah, Sunday, and I was sat outside Boots, and my wife went in buying makeup and stuff like that. And I was conscious while I was sat there vaping. I was watching all around me all the time, so that when I vaped, I wasn't blowing vape out into somebody's face and everyone going past him, yeah, blowing all that smoke. Carica, okay. uh, there, there is that, never. A, have there, you ever been seen accidentally naked? I was going to say uh, there is no accidental about it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> what, you're a flasher. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just th that's that's an interesting point. Do you do you two have the situation where if you've been on a show or you've been using your camera previously? Uh, so my I'm upstairs. Sorry, it's and, fucking rude, this, isn't it? I can tell. No, 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 no. <laughs> my hallways upstairs hallways there, and I'm terrified sometimes that I'm going to leave the camera on after I've been doing a show or or I've been live on Facebook or whatever. And you know you go into the bathroom or getting ready for bed, and I, I'm paranoid. I have to keep checking the camera. You never have that. Um, that's just me. There's not much to fucking see, if I'm honest. Um, I think I should be talking about work. you and not Les. me. Fuck you, Les. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the last thing that happened to me was a Herms man, and uh, he used to be the, the security guard at Tesco's, and he was—he's a coloured gentleman, really, really nice. He's quite Jamaican-ish, if that is actually not racist, but he's quite Jamaican-ish. Ah, you're doing your eight man and all that stuff. Anyway, my wife had not left me the keys. So it's about 10 o'clock. I ain't got up yet. I've stuck my dressing gown on and I've tied it. But I must have tied it but left a little bit up here. You know, pulled half it up. So I'm looking and not telling you. Oh, that yeah. way. So I've gone to the window just here when I'm, I'm reviewing. I open the window and he's just signing here, you know, the light. And then he must have looked and clocked it. The old little winker were out and ball sack. Well, the more ball sack the winker, because obviously I'm 40, so it stags a little bit lower. But I'll tell you what, he didn't want to look again, did he? He sat there going, eh, wait, whoa. And I didn't realise I still got back in, until the dog was licking it. I was joking about the dog winking, but he knocked again, though, for some reason. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've uh, been ac accidentally naked. I don't mind. Carry across the question, naked or not naked in bed. 
It depends. Summer, I think summer is the only time. But the thing is, it's never naked. It's boxes. Just in the boxes. Well, it's not naked. I walk around in my boxes all the time in a pair of shorts. <laughs> yeah. I've got man boobs. Like, same as me and Simon. Yeah. I'm proud of my boobs. I, mate, I tell you what, I've got breasts I could actually feed half of Ethiopia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I, I don't do clothes in bed. I never have done for years and years and years. Winter, summer, whatever. And I know it's just a thought not everybody wants to think about but I just well I'm a, I'm a commando man are you a commando man I don't wear pants I just like the smell no. of piss on my jeans <laughs> <laughs> you can get you can get uh, ten, a, ten a man now can't you as well oh mate it's not going to be long and I'm going to need it I've had four <laughs> kids you know <laughs> <laughs> what's well, your excuse isn't it <laughs> sorry the wife sat down here naked <laughs> not amused either <laughs> well, it's got to that point of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. I think we've done another two hours. I think you've both done absolutely amazing. Mm. Um, I think we'll pass it straight over to Dan to start off with. All right. Thanks for joining us again tonight, guys. Um, it's been great to have a you uh, ch- question to you, Manscape. That was an interrupted one. But <laughs> what, what's Manscape? Uh, I f- uh, that's where you're uh, shaving your bits, isn't it? Something like that. What, crack and sack? I don't know. Yeah, I... So the trouble is, when you start getting onto that, you start talking about anal bleaching. Have what? you read the reviews on Amazon for Imac? If you I get... I was going to say anal bleaching, then uh, I just got to type into fucking Amazon. Get, 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 review. get on Amazon and read the reviews for Imac hair removal cream. It, you will you'll split your sides. I, I have actually seen that one. I know the one you're on about. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. It's stitches. Sorry, have you know. actually had any anal, anal bleaching in your life, or...? Uh, no, no, I haven't. What about you, Dan? You look like a man that could maybe do a bit of anal no, bleaching. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> no? Definitely no. not, no. All natural, mate, all natural. <laughs> so, so do you shave a bit? Because obviously, I, I've, I've got to shave, I'm getting to that point. But it ends up looking like a thimble in a clown's hat. <laughs> and the, the trouble is, as well, because where our mirror is, on our bedroom, I have to jump up and down and try and... Zzz, at the same time, look where I am. It could get very dangerous. I have to wear hat and glasses. <laughs> Blood splatter and everything, is it, Aiden? Oh, fucking hell, it's way splattering. You're on about accidental naked. You should see what they're looking at over at Rodic Club. There's me jumping up and down. My ball sack means jumping, jumping, jumping. Not naked. Not very good, that is it, really. All right, we sort of got a sidetrack there, but okay. Um, all right, guys, well, thanks for joining us again tonight. And yeah, uh, it's been a good one. We'll see you next week. And yeah, pass it over to Captain Courtney. Thank you very much indeed. I say that, kid, I? I've, I, yeah, Henry. I've, I've had a fantastic night, uh, fantastic seeing everybody in chat. Um, I won't be here next week. I'll be sat, no, I won't be sat on a sunbed at this time. If I'm sat on a sunbed at this time of the night, next week, there's something definitely wrong. Um, but I might just see if I can if I can dial in from Lanzarote because I think it'd be a bit of a, a, a laugh. So I shall have to do my best to do that. But yeah, thank you very much indeed. Um, anybody who's in chat who's given me all the support this week, I really appreciate it. But as I said in, in sort of one of my recent posts, it's all about positivity now. That's that's the thing that I'm forget all the crap and the drama and everything else. I, I had. I'm, I'm much happier to be happy. So yes, thank you very much indeed for everybody in chat. Thank you to Aidan and Dan for supporting me, the the new boy again. Really appreciate it. It's been uh, been a, an absolute blast again. And I will hand you over to the wonderful Mr. Little Bro Aidan. Little Bro Aidan. Little Bro Aidan. Little Bro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, been absolute pleasure. You people in chat have kept us going. It's been absolutely fantastic. We want to send a big shout out to the one and only Kerika. The, the the splash screen that you sent again was absolutely fantastic. Spot on. Brilliant, yeah. really brilliant. Really do love it. Thank you so much. And to the wonderful Les. And again to every single one of you in chat. You have made us tonight. Really do appreciate you all sticking by us. I know sometimes it pull a bit of teeth, but look, we've all got crack and sacks. We all need to bleach and everything else. But we're still here. If you've not been to Dan's channel, get over and make sure you <laughs> subscribe to the wonderful fox down make sure you get over to the wonderful mr coily and if you have not got mr coily by now you'll need to be pressing that x1 and make sure you get over to his channel and sort it out ladies and gentlemen we'll be back next week maybe with a special maybe guest maybe with a special guest yeah 
we're not quite sure who we're going to have, but we're going to have a special guest for you next week. Thank you so much to everybody. Make sure you look after yourselves, and we'll see you again. Keep them juices flowing. See you in two Laters. weeks. <laughs>